Welcome in to another Subconscious Mind Mastery Podcast. Thomas Miller here. I'm so glad you are too. (laughs) Thanks for joining me. We're going to have some fun today on this one. We're going to take it up into the interstellar area of quantum jumping. Have you ever heard of it? You ever heard of the term quantum jumping? I went back and revisited uh, something that was part of my initial early days in the turning around of my life back in oh, dating this 2008, 2009 time frame, when I started looking for other options of ways to live and be better, I came across some of the early work uh, of Mind Valley. Many of you are probably familiar with them and probably have purchased some of their products or participated in some of their courses, etc. over the years. Well, they were just getting started, really, kind of back in those days, up getting up and out. And one of their early products that they took on was a guy by the name of Bert Goldman. At the time, Bert was like in his early 80s. <laughs> this guy is incredible. And the concept was on quantum jumping. Now, I found this even before Fred Dodson and Parallel Universes of Self But see, Parallel Universes wasn't released until 2007, and I know it was in development for a good couple of years. So this is, we're going way back now, almost 20 years ago, really, as these things were, this concept was coming to light in these various manifested forms of books and courses. But Fred had been studying Parallel Universes for a long time. I'm sure Bert had too. I don't know his story. And unfortunately, Bert left us last May of 2020 at the grand old age of a celebrated 92. And when you hear his voice, I think you'll agree that, my goodness, there's an energy there that is brilliant and radiant. I hope you see that or hear that as well. But the story is basically the same as Parallel Universes of Self. Fred took it to a much deeper level. So those of you who have listened to or read Parallel Universes of Self already have this base material. We're just going to bring it back up to the surface and work with it in a way that is really easy, which is what Bert did. Fred did the deep route. Bert did the simple route. Well, here's a guy who in his 80s learned how to paint, and became quite prolific at it. There are videos on his YouTube channel showing his art and his home, and he brings you into his home and shows you how he paints. There's all kinds of cool stuff on there if you want to go look for this. Also in his 80s, he learned to play the piano without taking any lessons. He started writing and publishing his own books, And during that time, he connected with Mind Valley and became one of their, as I said, first products. Now, it's interesting. I heard a story of Vision talking about this. He wasn't, Burt Goldman was not there first. Vision made that very clear. Because Vision said that he didn't believe in parallel realities. (laughs) I was like, what? (laughs) You've got to be kidding me. This guy runs this big, huge, massive New Age publishing company and Okay, well, maybe he could be introduced to Fred Dodson. (laughs) Maybe parallel universes of self would convince him. Or maybe results would convince him. But anyway, I'm sure that he probably does by now. Maybe that was an old video. Or maybe not. But anyway, so here's the concept. With quantum jumping and parallel universes of self, the idea is that we live in an infinite reality. And in an infinite reality, there are an infinite number of possibilities. And in an infinite number of possibilities, if you, through the power of your quantum mind, can conceive of another possibility, then it does exist in infinite form and you can connect with it. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. Now, there are ways to do it, and both resources, Parallel Universes of Self and the course that Bert did with Mind Valley and his YouTube channel is just chock full of stuff. There, there are ways and techniques that you can do this. So those are your resources. I'd love it if you bought the audiobook. 
But the book is there if you like to thumb through pages. And uh, the courses are still available on Mind Valley, and plenty of free stuff on YouTube. But the idea is, and the goal is, that you connect with the vibration of the version of you that is doing what you want to do. So when Bert Goldman talked about becoming a prolific painter, he found, connected with, created in his mind, the version of him who was a professional artist, making it work, selling his paintings. There was a demand. And through the process of connecting with that, as he says, doppelganger, in other words, a version of you that's already doing it, that doppelganger, you go into the quantum field through the through the power of your wonderful mind, and you connect with that other version, and you observe it, and you can talk with it. You can even step into it, but you basically connect with the vibration of that who is doing what you want. So I found that course in my Mind Valley file the other day, and I reconnected with it. And wow, was it just cool to, in essence, visit an old friend and then realizing that Bert was gone. He's now in the non-physical. He's in the infinite again. But I blew the dust off of that now, having done 10 years of work and narrated all those audio books and found it to be just amazingly refreshing and fun to reconnect with that program. Now, I'm going to leave a link to one of Bert's YouTube videos, and then you can find the channel and go from there. But it will get you started with an initial meditation of how to do this. It's very simple. So I decided to try it. <laughs> I thought, oh, okay, let's put this to use, because it really was something that I had not been doing recently. And I'm like, why not? Why have I not been doing this? So there was something that I was struggling with. And this is something that maybe some of you will be able to connect with. I've had a number of conversations with several of you who are dealing with relationship issues. And over the last month or so, I've been dealing with some struggles of the completion or from my perspective, incompletion of my relationship with Majana. Now, in that situation, that was definitely, as I've explained in previous podcasts, that was a karmic relationship, no doubt, past soul connection. Knew it the minute we met, knew it right off the bat. She connected with pieces of it, had some consultations where other people through past life connections determined a very specific incident that definitely carried some karma forward where basically... I This is a long time ago now. This is many, many, many lifetimes back because of the period. But basically, I was in that relationship. We were married, and I was the male, the husband. She was the wife, and I was a workaholic. Well, that carried forward. She was begging me to slow down, slow down, and I said, well, okay, I have one more meeting I have to travel to, and of course, by horse and carriage. And in my early 40s, I went to the meeting and in the process had a stroke and was crippled for about another 40 years. And she was the caregiver. And there was resentment around that. And that was one of the issues that we dealt with. That was one of the things that came forward. Well, I decided to connect with a doppelganger. On a hike. Now, you know, I like to hike. I meditate when I hike. I mean, to me, the physical activity of hiking is the best way for me to connect. So I didn't do the typical meditation, as you will hear in the YouTube video. I took it out to the woods. And using the same techniques, but just on a hiking trail, I intended, found, connected with. I mean, I you know, knew that there would be a version out there of us who were married and successful and had a bunch of kids and a family and the home and the whole nine yards. So I connected with that doppelganger, as Bert Goldman describes, and come to find out they had been married for 32 years, this version of me and Majana, six kids. And I asked, so I first I did exactly what he said. I observed, I just watched. And then, literally, I mean, this was so cool, started to connect to the point of asking 
that doppelganger, me, to join us on the trail and have a little conversation. And of course, my first question was, how'd you do it? And the answer came back. And actually, I had to do this twice. It didn't come back the first time. Second time. How'd you do it? There's more to the story that you don't know, he told me. And he went on to reveal what that untold or that unknown part was. And I, <laughs> I slowed down on the hiking trail because it was dark. It was dark, unresolved karma also brought forward. But he let me know what it was. And as I sat with it, I realized that not only that, this gets really bizarre, but there was a modern life doppelganger, if you will, or replication of that in my life. Over a decade before I met Majana, this issue came up in my life. And I can't go into details. I'm sorry. It's too private. But here was this doppelganger telling me this. I hiked it out and then realized, oh, my God, this showed up in my life over a decade before we met. And the doppelganger told me that how he did it was that he had been able to finally come to the place of accepting that and the issue before and everything around it and being able to resolve it and let it go. And I had to ask, well, I haven't gotten there yet, have I? He said, yeah, that's correct, you haven't. And that's why the incomplete feelings. And that's why the unresolved issues. So it's been amazing to me as I've worked with astrological charts, the nodes of the moon, past life regressions, my connection, as I mentioned, January in 2000, about, uh, sorry, January 2020, <laughs> about the beheading that's in the podcast back there around January, early January of 2000. It's that podcast about fear and fear brought forward. So it's like, and then I look at my astrological chart and I realize that so much of the structure of my chart is to transform and resolve a lot of this karma. So for me, what I've taken on is the more of this that can come up and come forward and come out and be dealt with, the better. That's why I'm here. And yet, here's this major one that's been alive in my life now since 2013 that is in the incomplete category. Or is it? Because then, I just love how the universe allows you to see what you need to see when you need to see it. Because on Twitter, just this past week, this was posted. There is an assumption that a meeting that is fated, F-A-T-E-D, means that you need to be in a relationship with that person. Many times, though, you are being tested to see if you have really broken negative patterns that don't serve you. Do you take the bait or not? And the stronger the initial sexual connection is, the more likely it's going to be a painful soulmate experience. If you meet and then instantly want to throw them over the desk, don't run. Boy, when I saw that, I had to sit with it for a good long day. But I realized that's exactly true. Sometimes the healing and the resolution sometimes is in when we separate from those negative patterns. And see, the problem is, I think this is so true. This is, gosh, it just I see it over and over and over again in astrology. What happens is, through hook or crook, we don't deal with them. We leave this life with them unresolved. I'll give you an example. My Aunt Pat. I've talked about Aunt Pat in past uh, podcasts. That's my mom's sister. She's still alive. And Aunt Pat, 
after my second divorce in 2007, sent me a letter saying that basically in the name of the Lord, uh, that my track record was not acceptable and that she was severing all ties, not to be contacted or to speak with again. The only communication I have had with her is when my own mom, her sister, died in 2013, she sent me a card. See, there's something about me that triggers something about her that is unresolved. I know I know where it comes from. It's unresolved between her relationship and her sister, my mom. Unresolved and not willing to face it. So block it out because somehow I reminded her of those unresolved issues. Those will come back. I have zero energy around all of that because there's no issue on my side. I'm not going to carry that karma forward. People have said, well, shouldn't you reach out to her now? It's been 10 years. Shouldn't you try to bridge? No, I mean, the issue's hers. I'm resolved. I'm not in conflict. So I'm complete. That is exactly what this is talking about. Many times you're being tested to see if you have really broken negative patterns that don't serve you. I, I, honest to goodness, I don't have any with her. I'm complete. If she were to welcome me back into her life, I would pick up right where we were. And no resentment. I don't resent her for her choice. I empathize with her. I'm sad for her. But she'll have to be the one to face that. I'm out. In other words, I'm complete. Now, what do you do with the situation that I mentioned around Majana? Because here is, you know, so you talk about a relationship. Well, don't you have to be together in order to resolve the stuff that you're dealing with? And what I'm realizing is, no, you don't. You can deal with it on your end. And if you need to do this practice of quantum jumping and going out there and looking for a relationship that basically you are complete in and connecting with that and then starting to do and be whatever those vibrations and characteristics are, then I think you really can, as long as there's namaste basically around. But look, again, like with Aunt Pat, you can't control what somebody else wants to do or not want to do. And in my case with Majana, she's made it clear. You know, I'm here, she's there, and that's the way it is. In other words, she said we tried all we could try. So now what I'm going to be doing in this context is more of these quantum jumps to go out there and figure out the resolution so that when I sip my last breath of air on the planet, I know that that will be complete as well. Or let's just say that I've done all I can do, right? I've done all I can do. There might be more on the other side, and there might be some together that still needs to be shaken out or flushed out in a future lifetime. But... I've done all I can do here now with the tools I have. And I think that is the key. So who knows? Maybe on the next hike, I'll go out there and find a doppelganger who has resolved all of these issues and step into that. But I know many of you are dealing with health issues, relationship issues, job issues, money issues, relocation issues, just all kinds of things. So you might explore some of Bert's material. You might get parallel universes of self. Yes, the audiobook helps pay the bills. Thank you very much. And you might create that self of you that is already out there, that has solved the problem or is doing what you would want to do. It's the well version of you. It's the great relationship version of you. It's the painter, artist, self-expressed person of you, making a living at it. By the way, Bert's paintings sold. And even after his death, you can go online and buy them, and they're not cheap. He was making a good living with those paintings, which he learned in his 80s. The lesson is, (laughs) if you've got breath, it's never too late to reshape and recraft your life. I hope this helps. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Thomas Miller. Enjoy the journey, whether that journey is here or somewhere else. The opinions on this podcast are those of the host based on personal experience only and are not intended as medical or psychological advice. If you are experiencing symptoms that require professional treatment, please contact a licensed medical practitioner.